And we take a look at a handshake that apparently started it all back in 2013. Our president shaking hands with Cuban leader Raul Castro at that memorial service for Nelson Mandela. That gesture believed to have initiated the process of normalizing, uh, normalizing relations between the U.S. and Cuba after close to five decades of isolation. We're not isolated from you. We're happy to be here with Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth on the Thursday morning edition of America's Forum. Miranda, the two leaders, President Obama and Raul Castro, expected to meet at the Summit of the Americas, which starts Friday in Panama. Should be interesting. The meeting taking place as word came out earlier this week that the U.S. State Department is considering taking Cuba off of the state sponsor's terror list. Meanwhile, a new poll taken shows that President Obama is more popular among Cubans than uh, either current President Raul Castro or the former dictator Fidel Castro. Our president in Cuba achieves an 80% approval rating. Hmm, very interesting. With more on that story, let's bring in our guest this morning uh, from Newsmax, Washington, my old congressional colleague, former Pennsylvania Congressman Bob Walker, and Skyping in from the Sunshine State of Florida, it's Newsmax.com Managing Editor Alina Hernandez. Uh, thanks to you both. Alina, let's begin with you. The poll shows out of 1,200 Cubans surveyed, 80% have a positive view of President Obama, less than 50% share that notion of either of the Castro brothers. Is that surprising to you? Not at all. I think uh, Cubans now see uh, Obama as a hero. Uh, you know, they, they have suffered for more than 50 years under the Castro brothers. They, they're hungry, they, their economy is in the tank, they, they have no freedoms, uh, their children are being indoctrinated into a communist system. You know, as information trickles into the island, they're very aware that there's a great big world outside of, of Cuba and Havana. And so they see this as a boom, potentially, in the future for them to, to have more normal lives. But, does, but isn't this interesting? Uh, at the same time, uh, you have uh, the Russian influence uh, evidently being ramped up uh, in Cuba and other places in Latin America, uh, which would mean that uh, probably there will be additional oppression. Are they aware of that at all? Uh, I think that, you know, they, they, uh, the Cubans, at least those on the island, certainly have been used to contact with the Russians. I mean, there's lots of um, relations with Russians. In terms of, there's been marriages since they were tied together in the 60s. I, I don't think that Cuba sees Russia as uh, a significant partner uh, in the future, which is part of the reason I think that the the Castro brothers have thawed to the U.S. and and made this possible. So I, I don't see that as a as a huge influence, but of course it's something that our administration, whether it's this one or a new one, is going to have to be very concerned about. Alina, we have to ask you, what about this decision to remove Cuba from the state sponsor of terror list? Do you think this is the right decision? Uh, it seems to me that this was something that was going to have to happen uh, in order for the new relationship to move forward. Um, if, if you're going to establish a diplomatic consulate in Washington, right now the Cubans just have an interest section, uh, you can't open up a bank account, you can't use credit cards. Um, there's, there's lots of transactions that, are, that have to happen. Um, you can't really do that if you're on the list of, 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 of terror. And also, you can't conduct any kind of business with any American companies if you're on a terror list. So uh, I think this was something that was going to have to happen. You know, I, I, I thought that it would happen a little bit later when we got more concessions from the Cubans in terms of freedoms for uh, political freedoms for its people and certainly, you know, more uh, freedom economically. Bob, I have to ask you, with a minute left, you and I used to run for public office every two years. The notion of an 80% approval rating for our president in Cuba, do you have any idea of the rationale for that? About 45 seconds, Robert. Well, I mean, I agree uh, with what, what Alina said. Uh, part of this is that the Cuban people have come to the conclusion that this is going to lead to more freedom for them. Uh, and uh, that, that's the reason for the popularity. Uh, the question is uh, whether or not that's real, because uh, it's also apparent 
uh, that uh, Obama sees this as a way of uh, increasing his stature in Latin America and in particular giving him a uh, very uh, nice uh, opportunity at the Summit for Americas uh, to uh, appear to be in a leadership position there. And so uh, some of this uh, is, is directly involved with uh, what uh, the, the U.S. President wants. And uh, speaking of the Summit of the Americas, we will talk more about that big meeting in just a minute. Stick around, there's much more ahead on this America's Forum for a Thursday.